Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P., Joe Pizapia, and today it's not only just the trade deadline in the NFL, but we've also got trading going on, the buying and the selling of the RBs and the wide receivers in Week 9. We're going to tell you the players we've got our eye on. We're also going to tell you the players that are being traded the most on the Sleeper app, and Andrew Erickson is here to help us break it all down. And, of course, our guest today, too, who we get to press at the top with some trade trade news going on is my good pal my wrestling buddy who i love to talk wwe and aew stuff with my dude it is brian drake who is here from the fantasy football hustle podcast you also know from sirius xm radio and i'm just going to press the guest right at the top here drake we saw uh, a move here chase claypool getting dealt uh to the chicago bears so justin fields I've moved up significantly in my rest of season rankings. I've got him ranked very highly this week. Things are starting to go in the right direction. They keep trading off the defensive pieces, so that can only be a good thing for the offense. Let's go. What is the impact here for Chase Claypool with the Bears and now what he's left behind vacant with the Steelers? Yeah, so with Chase Claypool, I was hoping he would get dealt to the Green Bay Packers, but you know, so he goes to the same division, but he goes to the Bears. To me, this is really a lateral move. You're going from a bad quarterback to another bad quarterback. The passing games are pretty low octane, uh, you know. But it's not like Chase Claypool's setting the world on fire here. He's only got one game over 50 yards the whole season, but mm-hmm. he's going to get an opportunity to play outside. Uh, on the other side from Darnell Mooney, who this might be the biggest benefactor of this whole trade right. now is Darnell Mooney because opens up a little few things for him down the field. I'll try not to cover my camera when I'm pointing here. I'm very animated. Well, they tell me, Joe, cover your camera as much as possible because yeah. your face so, uh, just puts people off on the YouTube channel. But in terms of, of Chase Claypool here, yeah, I, I think it helps everybody else on both teams besides Chase Claypool because he's just never mm-hmm. going to see enough targets to do – anything fantasy relevant. It, it, maybe if he's your wide receiver four, you got to plug him in on a bye week. But I mean, do you really want to count on the Bears pass game as you enter, you know, the the meat of the fantasy schedule and you get into the playoffs. So maybe this is a big boon for George Pickens. Maybe Deontay Johnson can finally get off the schneid. He's having a terrible year. Uh, and like I said, this could be great for for Mooney. But in terms of uh, Chase Claypool, uh, eh, doesn't really do much for yeah. me. It's the same same bad offense, same kind of player. Now, I have the same inclination. I actually kind of think this helps Mooney. uh, And I think it also helps my boy George Pickens, too. A little less, you know, competition out there for targets. I also keep talking about Erickson, how that schedule for the Steelers gets a little bit easier than it was for poor Kenny Pickett, who got thrown to the Wolves there in Buffalo against the Eagles. I mean, it's tough to throw a young quarterback out there. Coming off the bye, the schedule does get easier. I know he's got a couple of games against Baltimore left, but the rest of these games, you got to get Vegas, you got a couple other ones that are easier matchups. How do you see this trade working out from a fantasy perspective? Yeah, I think Chase Claypool's value doesn't really change that much. I mean, he's going, it's a pretty lateral move. You know, I don't think he's going to see significantly more targets in the Bears offense versus the Steelers offense. He was being like put into the slot as like a big slot player anyway. So I'm not so sure. I mean, I could see him carving out a role, and I think it helps Mooney. Obviously, helps Justin Fields just adding another weapon for him. You know, talking about Fields on a show earlier this week it was like they just need to add more pieces around him. Like that's ultimately what we're trying to get here from Justin Fields. So I think Claypool going there. I think honestly, the biggest winner, not even necessarily like Pickens or Deontay Johnson, because those guys have already been seeing a lot of targets on the offense. I think it's it's Pat Fryermuth. Like, who's going to be scooping up all those underneath targets from Kenny Pickett? It's going to be Fryermuth. So, especially now relating to the other trade that we had go on today with TJ Hawkinson going to the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, that puts Fryermuth in the top eight, I think, for me, rest of season. Like, he's a locked and loaded guy. Like, I feel great about Fryermuth rest of the season, especially with the schedule getting easier. Now that Claypool is gone, like, he was soaking up those very short targets around the line of scrimmage, even taking goal line carries at times. So, I think Fryermuth is actually the biggest winner of this altogether. All right, you mentioned the Hawkinson deal gets traded in division to the Minnesota Vikings, and a lot of us raised our eyebrow at that. So, Brian, I want to ask you real quick your thoughts, too. We get Irv Smith, who's going to be out a significant amount of time, obviously that mm-hmm. high ankle sprain towards the the worst end where it looks like surgery, some other things might be on the table for him. But uh, talk about Hawkinson, talk about also the vacation of targets that now he leaves behind in Detroit for that offense. Yeah, I think – Number one, I don't know why Detroit would do this. Uh, you're, you're trading a young guy. He's still on his rookie contract. If you needed to uh, extend him, you could always use the franchise tag at, at some point. Like, I don't really get why you're moving on from him. You know who I think this helps down the road? 
guy like Jameson Williams, if he gets on the field in the next few mm. weeks, just kind of opens things up for him in Detroit. Someone hit me up on Twitter and they're like, Drake, which tight end should I pick up in Detroit now? And I go, well, neither. I mean, I don't think any of these <laughs> two guys are going to do much of anything. It's still a terrible defense. They're mm. going to be throwing the ball a ton, but I don't necessarily think they're going to be looking to target some of these no-name tight ends on their squad. As in terms of Minnesota, it's great. It, will his fortunes change much more than he already is? No. I think he's going to put up pretty much the exact same numbers. This is a team that has Justin Jefferson, and they criminally underutilize him. So now all of a sudden you're going to start giving more targets to you know, a slightly – I don't want to say slightly better Kyle Rudolph from over time, but he is. He's younger. He's more athletic, and I think he'll be a red zone threat. And he's only going to take away – from Thielen, take away from Justin Jefferson and, you know, whatever KJ Osborne was getting. So it's kind of a, a, a net downgrade for the Vikings guys mm. overall. Uh, but yeah, why, if you're Detroit, why are you doing this for a couple of late? Well, picks? well I think stupid. Detroit just, I think Detroit realizes where they are and they're just trying to get more picks and they're just continuing to rebuild for the future. And whoever comes in next to the head coach is going to get to have influence potentially on some of those picks. Cause it ain't going to be Dan Campbell. I can tell you that right now. Uh, but what I also can tell you about are the most traded guys over on the sleeper app and the sleeper is of course the place to be playing fantasy football. We all know that. And don't forget, they've got a cool new game too, the daily drafts game. You can start for just a buck. You do snake drafts and then you can go ahead and use those lineups to compete and make some money check that out the daily drafts is very cool but today let's talk about the most traded rb and when you know it happens to also be the rb1 overall in most drafts it was jonathan taylor so jonathan taylor is that guy so i'm going to ask you real quick here uh do you want to buy sell or hold drake jonathan taylor i, I think you're going to hold him but you're going to hold him with an eye to trade if someone comes at you and they blow you away with an offer like you're gonna move this is a bad offense with a bad mm. quarterback they just fired just their fired offensive their coordinator OC. today yeah. <laughs> i mean i didn't know they had an offensive coordinator if you watch any of the colts games so i mean really how unless they're gonna lean on jonathan taylor with 30 carries a game a la derrick henry in tennessee i mean but they're not he's got a bad ankle why would you want to run your your you know, meal ticket for the next few years into the ground on a, a throwaway year. I could see them really backing off Jonathan Taylor and maybe getting Dion Jackson some more carries, uh, Naheem Hines some more carries. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if we get down the line and all of a sudden you just magically see Jonathan Taylor get shut down because what does this team have to play for? You know, they're awful. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, if someone wants to blow me away with some picks uh, and some, you know, dynasty, maybe some picks or in uh, redraft, you're going to give me two, three good players. I'm all for that. Give me yeah. players on good offenses. Hines is on the block too. We'll see if he gets moved in the next couple of hours here. So let's uh, let's play a little game. Who you want rest of season here? Uh, Dan Campbell said that DeAndre Swift is not a hundred percent. Well, it's also you know week nine. No one's a hundred percent except Andrew Erickson. He is always a hundred percent. Erickson, Jonathan Taylor, or DeAndre Swift. Who would you rather have rest of season? I'm taking DeAndre Swift. I, I don't think this is particularly close for me, honestly. I mean, I'm trying to move off Jonathan Taylor. I agree with, with Brian Drake's analysis there of, of Jonathan Taylor. Look, last year, everything went his way, and this year, that's not the case at all. Uh, we got to kind of forget what happened last year and move on because right now he's not healthy. And that's how you see explosive running backs be ineffective. You know, this ankle thing's not going away till next year. Like, I'm sorry to say that unless they shut him down for like two months. And then at that point, you're not even using him anymore. Um, yeah, I'm going to sell Jonathan Taylor, even if it's, you know, 75 cents on the dollar for assets I can actually use and feel great about. Whereas Swift, yeah, maybe not 100%, but he's coming back from a, a shoulder injury. Like, I'm, he doesn't have a lower body injury, so I'm not as concerned about him long term. He still looked explosive in that game. He played 55% of the snaps. So I, I'm going with Swift here. All right, let's see if I can uh, tempt you here. You want DeAndre Swift or Jonathan Taylor, Brian? Well, <laughs> uh, I have DeAndre I Swift in the league, yeah. and I'm trying to move him at the moment. Um, you know, again, it's a, it's about health, and I call DeAndre Swift Mr. Glass because he's always hurt. Here's the thing with DeAndre Swift is the Lions are not afraid at all to put Jamal Williams in at the goal line. Jamal Williams right. had, what, like eight touchdowns? He's like, he might lead the league at this point. I could probably look that up. Uh, and it, it wouldn't surprise me if they put more on the plate of Jonathan Williams at this point. I'd like to get off of both of them if I could uh, because they both still have names. Maybe guys in your league still think, wow, they're both fairly healthy and they could turn it around. Uh, so... If that could be my answer and I can totally cop out here, I'm selling them both. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. I, I would go with Swift as well. 
Um, but I will say this. The reason I'm going with Swift is Swift still has his touchdowns. He just happens to not get the goal line ones. He gets the big explosive ones, and he's always getting the targets too. They're very consistent. He's averaging about five targets a game too, so you know he's getting the work in the passing game. I just don't think Taylor is right, and I just don't know if this offense is going to be right for the Colts. How about Josh Jacobs or Jonathan Taylor? If I asked you this at the beginning of the season, Brian Drake, you'd probably throw me off the podcast, but it's week nine, <laughs> and the worm has turned. So be honest now. Be 100%. Keep it real. Jo- Josh Jacobs or Jonathan Taylor? Oh, it's it's Josh Jacobs. It's not even a question. And I oh, hate everything no about the Raiders offense. I Crazy. hate Derek Carr. Uh, you know, I'm not in love with anything out there, but this is a guy who's got a three down roll. You don't have to worry about Naheem Hines. You don't have to worry about, you know, Deion Jackson or anybody coming in and usurping touches from you. It's all Josh Jacobs, you know, and they had a bad week, whatever, burn the tape and move on. But, oh yeah, this is an easy one for me. All right. Is it as easy for you to give up on the one, one guy here, Erickson, and just go with Jacobs rest of season, or just the perfect guy to try to sell, right? Jonathan Taylor, take Jacobs. And then maybe even get an extra piece too, because for some reason Jonathan Taylor still carries that that one one overall tag along with him still, even though it's week nine and even though he's been injured. Yeah, I mean I'm taking Josh Jacobs here too. I don't really care what happened last week. It was very weird usage for him in a game that the Raiders just basically just laid an egg uh, on an sure East did. Coast trip from the West Coast. So Josh Jacobs has been more of a worthy of the one on one this year. I mean, if you had looked just at their numbers, Jonathan Taylor had one good game and it was week one and has really done not anything since where Josh Jacobs was putting up top five games back to back to back to back weeks. So we live in the now. Josh Jacobs has been better this season, and he projects better moving forward. So I'm going with Jacobs. All right, right, here's another fun one here. Najee Harris. Oh, yes, he's been traded quite a bit on the sleeper app. Whoever the other guy is, that's Uh, that's my answer. You know what? But again, I keep (laughs) pounding the table here for this better schedule. And I, I understand it hasn't been great, but... I don't want to throw away everything that I saw last year from Najee Harris or everything that I saw in college because he was an incredible talent. So let's let's be honest here. Um, obviously, you want to sell him, so I don't even have to ask Brian. Andrew, <laughs> do you want to sell him also if you can, or are you holding him at this point, hoping that maybe the schedule starts to open up for you a little bit? I mean, hoping for for what that he becomes an RB two. Like even if he even if the schedule helps him. And the Steelers offense, like, what is that really going to do for you? Like, give you an an able, a warm body in your RB2 slot? Like, someone you'll never put in your flex that has no upside any week? I mean, I'm selling him. Okay. All right. So, rest of season, you'd rather have Damian Pierce or Najee Harris? I would rather have Damian Pierce because, unlike Najee Harris, Damian Pierce, yes, they both play in bad offenses, but Pierce gets all the volume on his team. Where Najee doesn't like Najee is still splitting work with Jalen Warren, who continuously looks better than him every time he touches the ball. So it's a big issue when they're getting blown out in games that Najee's not in there for garbage time because that's when Jalen Warren is getting a lot of the points. So it matters that Warren is looking good in this offense and Damian Pierce has no competition. So I'm taking Pierce. All right, Brian Drake, same question to you. Would you rather have Damian Pierce or Najee Harris? Neither offense is exciting, but Andrew's going for the guy who gets all the workload. Oh, yeah. No no question about it. It's crazy to think about this. Is you know, I remember a few months ago, it's draft season, and people are talking about, you're taking Damian Pierce too high. You can't take Damian Pierce <laughs> in the fifth round. That's, that's ludicrous. You know, fast forward now to uh, week nine, and our second round pick, Najee Harris, maybe some people took him in the first end of the first round. Who knows? It, we can't even put him in our lineups. He's almost unplayable. The line isn't competitive in Pittsburgh. I watched their entire game last week against Philadelphia. That line doesn't get an inch. And Jalen Warren, it's almost like in the Dallas with uh, Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. Tony Pollard should get so many more touches than Zeke. Can Zeke have a role? Sure. That's fine. And that that is exactly how Pittsburgh should be, where Tony Pollard is Jalen Warren and Najee Harris is Ezekiel Elliott. They need to be flip flop <laughs> and be just used. It's very in depressing spot. though. Mm-hmm. Najee Harris has been in the league for two years. Ezekiel Elliott's been in the league for many, many. I don't think he's Harris healthy is, though. That foot Najee Harris can't be healthy. Of, has a lot of carries on his uh, his resume even well, from college. He does. And that's one thing that, you know, we've talked about on the show many times, you know, give me some of those guys, you know, like the Derrick Henry's of the world who didn't have necessarily all that stuff. I and mean, it's one of those things I thought hurt Saquon early in his career, too. He had so much work there. Penn State, by the time he got here, 
he was a little burned out and you know now he's back healthy but look how long it's taken all right uh how about miles sanders or Najee harris brian drake who would you rather have rest of season if you're watching this on on youtube uh you can see the philadelphia eagles neon over my shoulder here and is uh, I, I did a show yes, on that serious could be last equal parts you know self-loathing i yes. lived in philadelphia for six years i'm well aware of the love-hate relationship that eagles fans have with their players you know miles sanders is an interesting guy we, when you look at you know, he's on the final year of his deal. He's likely not going to be back in Philadelphia. They can run the wheels off him. He is going to lose goal line touches to not only Boston Scott and Kenneth Gainwell, but Jalen Hurts. But at the end of the day, I mean, you look at he's coming through. He's really productive. He's in the top 10 in the NFL in rushing uh, for fantasy. He's been, you know, very serviceable for a guy nobody wanted to draft. You can get Miles Sanders in the ninth round of drafts. People are like, oh, my God, I got fine. My fourth running back. I'll take Miles Sanders. Now he's an every week RB too. He's catching some mm. balls. The team's explosive, uh, you know, and they're they're constantly going for it on fourth down. They're constantly in the red zone. They score a lot of points by accident. He can get you 15 points in a PPR. So I give me Miles Sanders. All right, Erickson, same for you. Yeah, I'm going to take the running back on the team that just destroyed the Steelers and not the other way around here. So I'm going to go with Miles Sanders too. Okay, uh, there you have it. And of course, I'm using the trade analyzer, trade finder tools over at my playbook to make some of these deals up for the guys and try to challenge them. But I couldn't find anything for Najee Harris that they would uh, obviously uh, <laughs> accept in some way. So uh, we will uh, continue to you know highlight some of the tools here. And don't forget, you can get that at fantasypros.com slash my playbook. It's on the app. It's free. You download the app. You get all the news like I'm getting today for all the trade deadline stuff, all the injury stuff's going on there too, specifically tailored for my teams, which is great. So you can get that. And don't forget to go premium too. fancypros.com slash offers. Go get the six free months there when you go make a deposit. Then you can use the analyzer, the trade finder, all that stuff. So check out my playbook. Still plenty of time left in the season to use the tools to get over these humps, to get through by Mageddon, as uh, Bob Harris called it yesterday. Let's talk about some of the guys' favorites to buy low at the RB position. Uh, Brian Drake, you are the guest. Why don't you go first? Who is an RB you're looking to buy low on right now? Again, I like saying buy players on good offenses, and this goes completely against that. But I'm saying you can buy low right now on Antonio Gibson of the Commanders. Top 12 playoff schedule. Uh, I just looked over at PFF. They have uh, You can break down the schedules and all this nonsense, and it's great. So they have a top 12 playoff schedule. And here's what I like about uh, Antonio Gibson. Usually nothing, but I found this. They're using him the right way. He has now taken over that J.D. McKissick role. It would be great if J.D. McKissick could be sent out of town. Maybe he gets on the horn with Buffalo. He's like, baby, you want me back? I did you wrong. Come on. I know you wanted me before. I'll come back. It's different this time. Give Antonio Gibson that passing down role. Seven receptions in week eight. Taylor, you know, Heineke is really the key to this offense. He's so much better than Carson Wentz in getting the ball to playmakers. You see it with Terry McLaurin. Now we see it with Antonio Gibson. Brian Robinson's a great between-the-tackles runner. He gives you nothing in the pass game. So I'm sure you can go find Antonio Gibson, owner, and say, listen, you're never going to play this guy. He's Antonio Gibson. He's on the commanders of all teams. How about I give you my backup defense and you give me Gibson? It only took him three years to use the ex-wide receiver converted to running back in the passing game. <laughs> Come on, Ron Rivera. Let's go. Get with the program here. Erickson, how about you? Who's a buy low RB for you in week nine? Yeah, I love the call on Antonio Gibson, who started last week, not Brian Robinson. <laughs> like to throw that out well, there. But what uh, does starting someone... mean? <laughs> hey, it means a lot when you're trying to buy low on these running backs. You've been in the running back. So that's yeah. all the people that emptied the tank on Isaiah Pacheco a couple weeks ago. But hey. continue. <laughs> Hey, Continue. he's still going to start. He'll he'll start this week, too, so that'll be great. Uh, I'm going to go with DeAndre Swift. We talked about him earlier, and I like the opportunity here, and I like it even more because now there's no TJ Hawkinson. Like You're just taking out another target pass catcher in this offense, making it, it's the Amon Ross St. Brown show. So he's going to be a top 10 guy rest of the season because when he's played without Hawkinson, we saw it last year, and he was he just went nuclear every single time that he was on the field. But same thing with Swift. Swift saw five targets last week, and he only played 55% of the snaps. He only had five carries for six yards. So you're looking at this Lions offense and obviously bringing up Jamal Williams. Oh, well, Jamal Williams scored the two rushing touchdowns. Like, oh no. It's like, okay, well, how often is this Lions offense going to really be in the red zone? Like, okay, like their offensive line has been good this season, but their defense is horrible. Like they're going to be in constant shootouts as we've seen them play out this season. So you're looking for, okay, they're going to be in constant negative game script. Who does that benefit? DeAndre Swift. 
okay, you need a guy that can make explosive plays as a pass catcher and as a rusher because they're not going to necessarily see a lot of red zone opportunities. Who is that? Oh, that's DeAndre Swift too. So I think that when you look at the schedule, next three weeks, Green Bay, Chicago, Mm -hmm. New York Giants. Like, oh my God. Like DeAndre Swift could go freaking nuclear over the next three weeks. And then if you're still worried about him getting injured, you could always try to sell high after one of these big games. So I think that DeAndre Swift is a buy low running back. Um, I think that people are too concerned about the injuries like with basically any running backs. And the fact that Jamal Williams is still there, I think gives an opportunity for you to buy a guy like Swift. Yeah, we've also got uh, two linebackers too, potentially out for Green Bay Packers in that game with Devondre Campbell and Quay Walker too. So we'll keep an eye on that. That could even, you know, push that DeAndre Swift value up even more this week. Uh, let's get to the guys we want to sell though at the running back position. Uh, Erickson, why don't you kick things off here with that? Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Leonard Fournette. I think I talked about him last week as a sell high, and I think he scored a touchdown. I think people came after me in, in the the TikTok mentions about, oh, well, he scored a touchdown. Like you're an idiot. Like you didn't make the right calls. Like hey. He had, uh, what, nine? He rushed nine times for 24 yards, uh, 2.7 yards per carry. So far this year, he ranks dead last in NFL rushing EPA. Um, And he only saw three targets last week, the same as Rashad White, except Fournette was running a route on 73% of the dropbacks. Rashad White was not even close to that, and yet they both had the same exact target share. So there's rumblings in Tampa Bay that they're going to try to switch things up a little bit, try to kickstart this offense. Um, You're going to take a long, hard look at this rushing attack Tampa Bay be like, hmm, maybe we should try to get away from <laughs> Leonard Fournette a little bit here because hmm. he's basically putting out the Joe Mixon type of rushing numbers here, and it's just it's just not good. So uh, Fournette has been super volume dependent, has been super dependent on the volume, and I think that really makes it the, the selling the big selling point for me is looking at the schedule. Buccaneers second toughest schedule for fantasy running backs for the rest of the season per PFF. So I'm trying to get out of Leonard Fournette. Rashad White is rising and ascending and someone that you need to have on all rosters should not or should be not on any waiver wire because if Fournette gets hurt or they expand his role, you could see Rashad White being a piece down the stretch. But right now, I'm definitely trying to move off Fournette and I'm happy he scored a touchdown on Thursday night because that means he has value still. Those TikTokers are so vicious in the comments. If you want to go after Andrew, go after him in that argument we had on the live stream at least where he said Foreman couldn't get a touchdown and I said he would get at least one. Then you can go after Andrew. Don't go after him in the TikTok. That's just not fair. Uh, I kid, Andrew. I love you. All right, let's go to Brian Drake's guy. Who are you trying to get rid of at RB this week, Drake? This is tough because I don't really want to trade Aaron Jones because he's playing so well over the last few weeks. He's a top 10 PPR back. The Packers don't have anybody else. I mean, we've seen this offense. It's pretty pathetic. In 24 touches against Buffalo for over 150 yards. But here's what I don't like. You got a week 14 bye. So the week before the fantasy playoffs start, you must win to get into the playoffs. Your potential second round running back, Aaron Jones, is on by and not helping you at all. Is strength of schedule for the playoffs per PFF 31st. He gets the Rams, Dolphins, and Vikings. Green Bay is also dead last in rushing touchdowns. This offense, they just don't move the ball, right? So if you could Mm -hmm. ever sell a guy high, this is when you do it because he's coming off a pretty big game. On national TV, I love selling guys off these TV island games because everybody in your league saw it. So now you go, hey, look at Aaron Jones is in my inbox. This guy's trying to trade to me. Holy cow, I just saw this amazing game he had on Sunday Night Football. Sure, I'll take Aaron Jones. He's going to get a good matchup this week with Detroit, but then it gets real dicey. Dallas, Tennessee, at Philly, Chicago, then there's the bye and the playoff start. So maybe you get one more good week out of him here against the Lions, and then I want to move on from Aaron Jones. I want to get away from anybody with those week 14 buys. It's a great point, too. Those standalone games, for better or worse, people overreact either very positively or negatively to what they see. Like last night, I'm not going to overreact to what I saw with the Bengals. For some reason, the Browns just give Joe Burrow fits. Let's move on. I mean, that that happens. Let's talk about the Colts and the He didn't have Jamar Chase, so that does help. Yeah, but you know (laughs) what? I mean, (laughs) it doesn't help. But at the same time, I'm not going to overreact to it. Like, you want to go buy Higgins and Boyd now? Perfect. Go do it because they're still going to be useful for the next month. Now, before we move on, I want to tell you about this month's November giveaway. We're giving away an Austin Eckler autographed jersey. Thanks to our great friends at pristineauction.com. All you have to do is go drop a five-star review of the podcast wherever you get your pods. So go to Apple Podcasts, say, I love the Fantasy Pros podcast. It's the best. You know what to do. And then you go to fantasypros.com slash contest to enter. And don't forget, when you follow us on the TikTok on the Instagram, on the Twitter machine. All three of those are entries into the contest too. So that's four all together with 
the dropping of the review of the pod. So go to fantasypros.com slash contest and go win that Austin Eckler autographed jersey today. Let's get to the most traded wide receivers on the Sleeper app. And wouldn't you know it, it's DJ Moore. Everybody's looking to get out now. Last couple of weeks, things have gotten a little better for DJ Moore. But Andrew Erickson, should you be buying, selling, or holding DJ Moore? What side of DJ Moore do you want to be on? Yeah, I definitely would want to try to sell high on DJ Moore. I think that that's the right move just based on what he's done over the last couple of weeks after basically doing nothing to start the season. Look, he was going to finish as a wide receiver too. I bet that's where he does end up finishing this year just because that's what he's done every single year of his career. He's always been a fantasy wide receiver too. So that's why I feel okay selling him knowing that, yeah, he's still going to have production. It's not like he's just going to bottom out. I don't think that he will, especially because we've seen him just become so much more involved in this offense without McCaffrey, without Robbie Anderson. They don't really have anyone else to get the ball to. So he has a high floor in that aspect, but I still think his ceiling is limited with PJ Walker at quarterback. And he's not going to play the Falcons every single week. I know he plays the Falcons soon again as they play in the same division but i think it's a time to sell high on him if someone can you can get a fringe like wide receiver one you know coming off a bad week or you can package dj more with another piece to get an elite wide receiver that's the move that i would be making all right so dj Moore or jerry judy who would you rather have andrew rest of season I think right now I'd probably actually rather have Jerry Judy. I mean, Jerry Judy's really impressed me over the last couple of weeks. You know, he's kind of taken over. He has a higher target share with Russell Wilson and in games that he's been healthy alongside Cortland Sutton this season. And the Denver Broncos have an excellent schedule, you know, coming up the rest of the season. And then when they come back from their bye week, they have the Titans and the Raiders, like two really great matchups for wide receivers. So I think Judy probably actually has like a potential to be a top 15 guy if he continues to produce with Russ versus DJ Moore, where I think that he's going to be a wide receiver too. Like, I really think that's what his ceiling is. And I'm willing to take a risk and go shoot for a little bit more upside, maybe with the Jerry Judy versus Moore, who I think will ultimately be held back by PJ Walker. All right, we still got a few hours left for Jerry Judy to get traded, but in the vacuum of where we are at this moment in time, Jerry Judy's a Bronco, so Brian Drake, DJ Moore, or Jerry Judy, who would you rather have rest of season? I'm going to go with DJ Moore. You, you see his, you know, he's getting the target share, PJ Walker's breathing a little life into this team. Isn't it funny? Two weeks ago, the narrative was PJ Walker had a negative A dot in a game and everyone laughed ah pj walker's the worst and then all of a sudden he comes out you know and he hits dj walker on basically like a hail mary and, and they score a touchdown and should have won the game and then i was like pj walker's great uh, the offense is back you well, know look, he made the, the throw of the week probably yeah i mean outside of that amazing throw that gino had in this game like it would have thought pj walker gino smith and these are the throws we're talking about at this point but you're right dj moore had that reception dj moore and the Panthers had more than one opportunity to win that game, and they fell short, unfortunately. But it's weird to think that you had Baker Mayfield, Darnold, like all these guys, but P.J. Walker is the guy that's going to unlock D.J. Moore and bring him back to relevance because it feels like it's happening. Sure. Uh, and D.J. Moore is a very talented guy. And, uh, boy, oh, but wouldn't you love to see D.J. Moore in Green Bay or someplace he could go and really excel with <laughs> Aaron Rodgers would love to see anybody in Green Bay than who he sees, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, so I'll take DJ Moore there. I think, you know, he's kind of the only game in town. And they're going to, in my mind, run a, an offense very similar to what we're seeing in Atlanta. They, they want to hide the quarterback. They want to mm -hmm. run the football uh, with Foreman. And if Hubbard comes back this week, they'll take a couple shots once in a while uh, to DJ Moore. Uh, but I, I, that Broncos team, if I have to watch another standalone Broncos game as a Cortland Sutton owner. Tough. Like I'm going to bang my head into the wall. It's driving <laughs> That's me crazy. Nothing. You should ask Erickson. He's under a blanket for most of those games. It's really, it's been tough, but who knows if Judy gets traded, maybe we'll see what happens. Um, let's talk about another wide receiver. Perhaps I could tempt you away. Who would you rather have rest of season Jacoby Myers or DJ Moore? Drake. We always used to have the joke, and I know Aaron Erickson's a big Patriots fan that, uh, you know, it's the Steve Stifler line for Jacoby Myers. You don't score until you score. <laughs> but uh, he actually had, what does he have, two touchdowns this year? Uh, Look, he's so been he's, very he's solid. He's been like a wide receiver week. three. <laughs> yeah, he's been a wide receiver three or better pretty much every week, but he can't shake the stigma of he's the guy that doesn't catch touchdowns. Yeah. And the Patriots don't, you know, favor anybody. And Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi, like, it's just so controversial. Like, he can't shake all the negativity, but meanwhile, the productivity has been very good for Myers mm -hmm. this year. Yeah, hey, boy, it's it's tough. You look at DJ Moore is a guy you drafted in the you know fourth <laughs> round or so. I got I, I had a draft where I took 
the Jacoby Myers thing in the 15th round. Nobody wanted him. Uh, and now he's super productive. But oh, between the two, you know what? I'm sticking with DJ Moore. I, the upside's there. Big playability. I think he should get more targets on a weekly basis. Um, I mean, it, it's tight, though. That's a close one. All right. How about you? Jacoby Myers, Erickson, or DJ Moore? I'll go with DJ Moore here. I, I think that it is yeah. close. Like Blast Drake for me, alluded. Patriots fan. <laughs> like, like Drake alluded to, it definitely is close, but I still think that Moore is pro- is is the the higher talent of, of a receiver. I think that he just offers more from after the catch as a downfield th- threat. And I get, you know, the Panthers quarterback play has obviously been better with PJ Walker. It's still like, I don't really know what is going on with Mac Jones. He's just not looking. He's taken like a, a major step backwards from his rookie year. And that's concerning. And you have whispers of Bailey Zappi coming in and that hasn't really affected Myers up to this point. But mm-hmm. it's betting on like, okay, do you think that's going to continue to keep happening? Like if the Patriots quarterback play continues to be inconsistent, like is Myers going to keep delivering? I guess I would say I'm not as optimistic that, that would happen. Well, he's delivered more. with both now. Right. So he right. has delivered with both QBs. So I guess there's a little less pressure there. Right. But I wouldn't necessarily say either quarterback has played, you know, overall very well. And they've also played really easy defenses. Um, the Patriots schedule gets much tougher. During the second well, half, I, of the year. I think the Jets' defense is pretty good. I can't believe you're putting me in the spot to defend the Jets. Like, I hate when you do that to me. But yes, the Jets' defense is well, pretty the, good. I but... mean, well, Jacoby Myers is playing out of the slot, so he didn't have to go up against you know the two guys on the you're outside. Right. No Reed sauce for him. Sauce. I get exactly. it. I hear no you. Sauce. you. Avoid the no sauce. sauce for Jacoby. Put the sauce on the side. That's what they say. <laughs> Devonta Smith. Let's talk about him. Buy, sell, or hold. Another guy's been traded a lot on the sleeper app. Ryan Drake. Where do you land on Devonta Smith's value right now? You want to buy, sell, or keep him? You know, if you have him, he's great in weeks like this where you have six teams on by. You need to plug somebody in. You go, ah, you know, I've got, you know, Cortland Sutton's out or, or you know, whoever's on by this week. Uh, but they spread it around so much in Philadelphia. And there's just weeks where guys get left out. And it seems more often than not, that guy is Devonta Smith because you know, you've got Dallas Goddard who's going to get his. And you've got A.J. Brown, who I'm sure we'll talk about a little later. And, it, it's Devonta Smith is a great player, obviously Heisman Trophy winner, uh, but you know he's not someone who's going to be the cornerstone of your fantasy team. You're not winning a championship or losing a championship based on Devonta Smith in your lineup. So you know if somebody wants to blow you away because they're desperate for a wide receiver this week, okay. I mean it, it's fine because there's a million guys you could start over Devonta Smith weekly. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, some players that perhaps you'd rather have or not have rest of season over Devonta Smith. Michael Pittman Jr. was certainly drafted over him, but man, we're getting to a weird place now with that Colts offense, <laughs> OC change, quarterback change, lots of change. Who knows? Maybe even Frank Reich doesn't make it out of this season, but who would you rather have Michael Pittman Jr. or Devonta Smith Drake rest of season? I mean, there were some signs of life this week for Pittman um, with Sam Ellinger here. Uh, but again, it's a real bad offense. So as I would say, like, give me the guy on the better <laughs> offense here. Um, it's crazy to think this, but I- I'll take Devonta Smith here. I think I would tend to agree. How about you, Erickson? Three for three? Yeah, I think that right now he's not my sell high wide receiver, but Pittman is someone that I would be putting on the block. I mean, 39% target share looks great. Mm-hmm. Seven for 53 is not nearly as great as 39% <laughs> target share sounds. So I look, Smith is going to be more up and down. I think Pittman has a higher floor, but Smith is going to have games where he blows up. Like just naturally when the target, when it's not AJ Brown catching mm-hmm. the three touchdowns, someone else is going to be catching double digit touchdowns in the offense. And Devonta Smith, despite AJ Brown's blow up, he still had eight targets last week. So right. I think Smith is like a super great buy low right now after he you know, didn't do a lot in the box score and AJ Brown basically stole the show. All right, here's another one. Now, again, this might be a little short window here, looking ahead with Jamar Chase out for the next few weeks. Tyler Boyd or Devonta Smith? Erickson, I know Monday night did not look good for Joe Burrow and the Bengals, but we'll put that aside. Who would you rather have, Boyd or Smith, rest of season? I'm still going with uh, Devonta Smith. I mean, I don't think Tyler Boyd has, so, has basically locked in that, oh, he's the number two guy. I mean, because Hayden Hurst still gets targets in that offense too. It's fair. So I, I think that I'm leaning on an offense that is – Still cooking right now. And I think Smith is just, when I just compared the two players, like who would I rather have in a vacuum, Devontae Smith or Tyler Boyd? Taking, you know, the former first round pick, Devonta Smith. So I'm going to go with Smith here. Drake, same for you, taking the Heisman winner. These are, in my mind, they're the same guy. 
they're they're very much the same player to me and mm. it, it, it's almost like they get used the same i know boyd plays a ton out of the slot and the eagles kind of move guys around a little bit but devonta smith is more of an underneath receiver if you look at the numbers here i mean outside of this past week it was terrible but right. i think I, I would lean a little bit towards boyd because the Bengals are now running almost exclusively out of shotgun they're throwing the ball all over the yard you know, Joe Mixon has now proven he can't run. The line stinks, so they're going to be tossing it around. They do have a bye coming up in week 10, so that could be a deciding factor. The Eagles already passed their bye. That's huge. Anybody who's passed their yeah. bye gains a little bit more in terms of trade negotiations. Uh, but I don't know. I, I'm fine with having Tyler Boyd on my squad. All right. There you have it. Let's move on to some of the guys' favorite buy low and so high wide receivers. Brian Drake, start us off with your top buy low wide receiver for week nine. Well, it's tough to be a buy low. When I wrote this up, he didn't. You know, this is before the Monday night game, before he went crazy. But I picked Amari Cooper. He's got four double digit target weeks. He only has two mm-hmm. weeks under 10 PPR points, and he's scoring. Fantasy football is about scoring touchdowns, and he's scoring in five of eight weeks. Oh, by the way, he's going to get Deshaun Watson back. So Amari Cooper on pace to have a career year. Why Dallas got rid of this guy uh, is beyond me, because now there's rumors that they're looking for a wide receiver to trade for at the deadline when they had this guy there, but they just overpaid him. Uh, So yeah, my buy low Amari Cooper, maybe people were out trick or treating. They didn't see the game. So you can get it and just, maybe they just saw the highlight of Amari Cooper trying to throw a pass uh, and you can (laughs) buy him on the low. All right, Erickson, who's your buy low wide receiver for the week? I mean, isn't it obvious? I mean, it's Devonta Adams, like coming off, like all these Raiders right now are by low because entering this game, you know, they were a top 10 offense by most efficiency metrics and maybe they all got the flu or something. They just, they just suck. They were just so. Adams was ill. You recall going into the week, had the flu or some ill, it was an illness, whatever it was, it was labeled as illness. He did play, but my goodness, it was a rough day at the office for the Raiders. Yeah, it, w- it was horrible, but the usage for Adams was still really good. You know, ran around on 28 of 29 Derek Carr dropbacks, 97%. So he's on the field on every single play. Um, he only caught one pass for three yards on five targets. Three of his targets, though, were 20 plus air yards. So he was seeing value targets down the field. Obviously, you no know, red zone targets because the Raiders weren't even close towards the red zone. But <laughs> through the halfway point of the season here, Adams, despite this horrible game, Sixth in target share at 30%, 11th in air yard share at 40%, eighth in weighted opportunity. So he's still a top eight wide receiver by all metrics. And not to mention, the Raiders have a top five schedule for fantasy wide receivers for the rest of the season, you know, per the fantasy pro strength of schedule tool. So I think Adams right now, this is this is your ch- chance to get an elite wide receiver. If you want to get rid of one of these running backs, which I want to do as much as I'm humanly possible, like Adams is the guy you want to go get because he's the only elite wide receiver coming off such a bad game that you can actually get someone interested because you know you can't trade for justin jefferson you can't trade for these types of players because they know the owner is like oh well, he's an elite receiver like i don't want to move him right especially you can't coming trade off for tyreek hill yeah. you can't trade for anything else exactly. but adams is that one guy you could right now yep exactly all right now uh, let's move on to some of the guys we want to get rid of so erickson will stick with you who are you selling off this week at wide receiver. Yeah, I'm going with uh, rookie Romeo Dobbs. So he played the most snaps among the Packers wide receivers, seven targets, four for 62 and a touchdown, a 24% target share. But uh, look, the yardage wasn't great. You know, 62 yards isn't really not, oh, this is amazing. The touchdown is obviously what was his big highlight from that game against the Bills. And I don't think it's any coincidence that it came in the one game that Alan Lazar wasn't playing. Like Alan Lazard had basically been Rogers' go-to guy in the red zone all the year long. He misses a game. Oh, what do you know? Dobbs catches a touchdown. So I just think the roller coaster of Romeo Dobbs' rookie season, how it's been this year, he's just been super inconsistent entering week eight. You know, he was one of PFF's lowest graded wide receivers, as I talked about him in the start sit show. And I obviously was wrong because he ended up having a good game. But I don't think that really one good game doesn't necessarily mean to me that, oh, Dobbs has made it because he's had good games this year. He's also mm-hmm. had a lot right. of really bad games this year so with a big prime time spot like i would rather move dobbs for somebody like a wandell robinson who's coming off a bad week but wandell projects so much better throughout the rest of the season the giants have a great schedule for wide receivers i feel better about his role versus dobbs where i think it's just going to be very inconsistent play so if i can kind of just rub my hands clean of him get a decent profit get a running back or a wide receiver that i like more consistent play from i think that's the move i would make all right. What's the move you want to make, Brian Drake, to trade a wide receiver in week nine? Who are you selling high on? 
Now, again, I don't really want to do this, but I'm telling people if you want to make money, sometimes you got to sell hot assets. It's AJ Brown of the Eagles. Now he's wide receiver seven, but he only had two touchdowns entering the week. Big three touchdown performance. It was just mm -hmm. a monster day overall for AJ Brown in 37% target share in 57% of the Eagles air yards, right? So he's getting the targets, but is he going to keep producing those touchdowns? Like we said earlier, Eagles spread the ball around a ton. They got a lot of weapons and they also love to run the football. So th this was really kind of an anomaly where the Eagles just aired it out and they started really throwing the ball up into the end zone to AJ Brown. That's not something they've been doing uh, to this point this season. So again, I don't want to get rid of AJ Brown, but if you're going to sell high, you could get a haul for him coming mm -hmm. off this. Use those numbers when you're talking to the guys in your league, go, Look at this. The guy, nearly 40% of the targets this week, scored three touchdowns. Why wouldn't you want this guy in your team? The guy might turn around and say, well, why don't you want him on your team? Why are you giving him to me? But uh, again, I'm a generous manager. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> you like, want everyone to exceed. That's yeah, because, so, because, that's oh, right. because I'm going to take the problems off your roster. I'm going to take Devontae Adams off your team. And you know what? Throw in another guy. He's going to be a running back back too. Yeah, no, like it makes a lot of sense. This is we know AJ Brown's production has been good, but certainly some sporadic where he's had some monster games and some quiet ones, and that's sometimes a little tough. So this is the one where if you're going to cash him in, or if you've had a lot of injuries, or you have terrible buy situations coming up, where you might be able to cash him in and get a lot of really solid value in multiple players, mm -hmm. as you're talking about. Uh, not that you want to. Sometimes you got to look at the roster and realize what's going to bring you back the most. Uh, what always brings us back the most is, of course, all of you. All of our friends who always ask us questions, and we're going to hit our listener mailbag on all these questions here on the three and out come straight from you in our Discord channel. So go and join at fantasypros.com slash chat. It's free. But again, remember before when I said my playbook, fantasypros.com slash offers, you go, you upgrade six free months premium. Well, that works over on our Discord too. You get access to stages, the AMAs, all the fun stuff, including chances to be on the show when we make you famous here. Let's start with this first question from Sheesh. Sheesh wants to know, been trying to trade Debo the last two weeks. Nobody will even think about it. What can I get for him? Andrew Erickson, we've talked about selling him last couple of weeks here for Debo. At this point, what's a fair return or something you think you would take to move on from Debo? Well, I think that the manager here has to kind of read the room. And if he can't trade Debo for anybody, then I think you may just need to hold him. Like there becomes a point where, yes, you obviously want to trade players that, you know, maybe don't project super well, but you also have to get something of value in return. And it's not like Debo Samuel is just dust now. Um, you know, I thought that he was being overvalued as like a fringe wide receiver one, but the 49ers still have a pretty good schedule down the stretch. He's still going to have some good weeks. It's not going to be nearly as consistent with all the other pieces in that offense, but I'm not going to trade Debo for some fringy player because that's the only deal I can make. Clearly your, your league doesn't value him that highly. So in essence, I, I probably am not going to end up moving. I'm probably just going to end up holding him. All right, Brian. Next one's for you from Rojo Mojo wants to know for Hopkins. Would you trade Leonard Fournette or Deonta Foreman? Uh, look, I would trade either if you can get Hopkins. But let's say you have a choice and someone saying, yeah, I want one of those RBs. Who's the one you should hang on to and who's the one you should deal? Well, I, I'm going to piggyback off what Andrew was saying earlier with Leonard Fournette as kind of a guy to move. But what a great week for Deonta Foreman. He looked incredible. Now, he's going to be sharing work with Chuba Hubbard, who's going to be coming back. His ankle's going to heal up. But Foreman's a guy who's kind of ascending, right? They want to mm -hmm. run the ball. That's the identity of their football team. Leonard Fournette's a guy kind of he'd be going in the wrong direction. They might want to now start seeing what they have in Rashad White. So Hopkins is great. He's going to get you 10 catches every single week going forward for the rest of the season. That's a schoolyard offense. So, I mean, again, I'll trade either one of those guys, but – I got to make the choice. I'll give him Fournette. Make him throw something else in too. You'd be like, Fournette's great. Look, I drafted him in the second round. Give me Hopkins and, uh, you know, mm. we're too Daniel late Carlson. for that round business. No more round garbage in week nine. Doesn't matter. We, we want to move hey, uh, I'm Jonathan you, Taylor for Josh Jacobs right now. That stuff I, is dead. Over. I know it is, but I'm telling you how guys think in these home leagues. They do. They they do. Think, oh, no, I bought him for this. You know, uh, they can't right, get off to news car lot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Dr. Hammond's question. Do you trade Jonathan Taylor and AJ Brown for Dalvin Cook and Ken Walker the third? Erickson, what side of this deal do you want to be on? 
Yes, I want to be on the side with Dalvin Cook and Ken Walker. We just talked about, you know, selling high on A.J. Brown. I think that this is the type of scenario where you're getting a very, very good haul back. Dalvin Cook's yeah. already had his bye week. Ken Walker is a is basically flirting with league winner status as a running back sure to take over leagues. And just looking at his roster, so he has Raheem Mostert, Tony Pollard, Daryl Henderson and Pacheco. So mm-hmm. Pollard is on a bye week, so he can't play him. Mostert, Cook, and Ken Walker, that's like a very strong three duo or a you know trio of running backs that they can have versus his receivers where he has CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown. And, you know, I don't think he necessarily needs to have AJ Brown with those two guys kind of leading the way. So mm-hmm. I think that three strong running backs would be the move here and moving off Jonathan Taylor with his ankle injury and getting a solid return back for AJ Brown. If you need more help finding trades, download the My Playbook app or go to fantasypros.com slash my playbook where you can get the trade analyzer, trade finder tools. Go premium with the six free months at fantasypros.com slash offers. Then you can go hang out with us in the Discord. And of course, we're giving you stuff too. The Amon Ross St. Brown autographed helmet from Pristine Auction. Go to fantasypros.com slash contest to go enter today and don't forget you need to drop a five-star review of the pod wherever you get your pods and we appreciate all of you listening hang out with us here on the pod on the youtube channel we see you we hear you we love the community here at fantasy pros you guys are just amazing to uh to wake up every single day and talk football with and we're happy to have you around here so that'll do it for us i want to make sure you go fire uh follow our good friend brian drake too don't let me forget that over at Drake Fantasy on the Twitter machine. Go follow Brian Drake and check out his work at Sirius XM and, of course, the Fantasy Football Hustle on PFF. Now, that'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for Brian Drake and Andrew Erickson. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. <laughs>